Are you ready to get confused? Well, not necessarily confused. Let's say, are you ready to stop confusing anti and anti? <laughs> what? Anti and anti. Well, this one is pronounced anti too, but not always. Anti, A-N-T-E, is a Latin prefix. It means before. We've seen antebellum in a previous video. Remember? The antebellum architecture in the American South refers to the architectural style from the time before the American Civil War. Antebellum could refer to a period before any war, but in American history, antebellum refers to the time before the American Civil War. Anti is also a prefix, but it comes from Greek. It means against or opposite. The word antibiotic was created using the root word bio, meaning life, or microbial life. You can pronounce it antibiotic or antibiotic. You know when you go to an Italian restaurant and you have an antipasto? Antipasto. Uh, okay, now, wait a minute. That's something you eat before the main meal, an appetizer. Antipasto? What's against this pasto here. Well, let's look at some more examples. We'll talk about this in a minute. Some offices and homes sometimes have a room that enters into another room, something like a lobby. A doctor's office may have a waiting room where you, well, wait before you go into the other rooms, usually toward the back of the building, the main part of the office. What would you call that? An anteroom. Ante room, the room before you get to the other rooms. Egyptian pyramids have antechambers. They blocked off the antechambers to stop tomb raiders from entering the actual burial chambers. In poker, the stake you put up before you receive new cards is called the ante. You may be thinking, unless you play poker, who cares? Well, the next time you're working on a project and someone says, Let's up the ante and add all these new features to this product. You'll know where the expression up the ante comes from. I told her that I wanted to up the ante and hold my breath longer than any human being ever had. You go all in before you even know your hand, so to speak. You up the ante. You set a higher standard for yourself, so you're not shy about taking risks. Like a fearless poker player, you take a gamble. You up the ante. You get the point, that you can always up the ante. You can always try to up the ante. Who are your antecedents? Antecedents? Antecedents, these are the people that came before you. They're your antecedents, like your ancestors. Ah, ancestor. Do you see the prefix anti hiding in ancestor? Anti, before as in predecessor, meaning whoever went before someone. Someone who held your job before you is your predecessor. I was speaking about the many changes that have happened since Christopher Graham, my predecessor, spoke to you the year before that. Your ancestors were those who came before you too, right? But it has more of a sense of previous generations. An antecedent can have a more general meaning too. It could be anything that comes before. In this sentence, what does his refer back to? After receiving a promotion, John decided to up the ante and ask his boss for a new office and an assistant. Another way to say this is, what's the antecedent of his? It's John. His means John's, his boss. John is the antecedent of his. So, is the antecedent the same as a precedent? You know, you start letting people do something once, then they'll want to keep doing it because you set a precedent. Lawyers use legal precedents all the time. They look at how the law was interpreted in a previous legal case. Then they can use the precedent to argue a current case. Precedent and antecedent have very similar word formations. Why do they have such different meanings, though? Well, words sometimes take on meanings of their own throughout their histories. But in this case, anti and pre mean before, 
but pre could also mean something that happened first. It's a small difference in the meaning of the prefixes, but a huge difference in the meaning of the words we inherited from our antecedents. <laughs> well, from our ancestors. Okay, should we talk about antipasto now? Against pasta or something? <laughs> We're almost there. I'm not done with ancestors yet. Sometimes anti and anti lose their vowel when they combine with another word. We saw that in ancestor. There's also anti-acid or antacid. Opposite the Arctic Circle, you have the the Antarctic Circle. We call it Antarctica, not Antarctica. When your favorite foods start to fight you, fight back fast by taking the antacid. In a story, you have the main character, the hero or the protagonist. And sometimes you have a character working against the protagonist, the antagonist. You have the protagonist and the antagonist, a hero and an anti-hero. The uh, protagonist or antagonist anti-hero from the film Taxi Driver made such a wish. We've looked at the Greek word root pathos before, remember? It means suffering, feeling. If you can sort of feel the same way as someone else who's going through something difficult, you have sympathy for them. You sympathize with their suffering or with how they must feel. On the other hand, cats and dogs have a natural antipathy for each other. Antipathy. You can see the Greek prefix at work there. Sympathy, antipathy. If you're bitten by a venomous snake, you need something to counteract its venom, right? Well, at least you hope there is an antidote for the venom. Antidote. As soon as your comfort zone is shaken, you have to think, what, 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 what can I do about it? What's the antidote? Of course, anti didonai, Greek for give. Antidota pharmaka medicine given against something to counteract the effect of something else. An antidote. Hmm, antipasto? Antipasto. <laughs> okay, anti from Latin means before. The Greek anti means against or opposite. Antipasto comes from anti, before, and pascere, to feed in Latin. But in Italian, the word became antipasto. Why not anti? Well, it's a different language from English. The Italian language has its own rules. Now, English borrowed the word antipast, which is consistent with the prefix anti, while in Italian the word is antipasto. We ended up with this anglicized version of the word antipast and with an Italian version of the same word, antipasto. Of course, no good Italian restaurant would call it antipast. They use the Italian word antipasto. And this video is an antipasto for what's still to come on the channel. Consider supporting the channel by becoming a member. For much less than the price of an antipasto at an Italian restaurant, you can support the channel so I can continue producing new content for you and you get some perks. Thank you.